hello everybody. Uh, welcome to a Board Explorer walk video. This is a video made really for the Board Explorer group and anybody who wants to take a walk around uh, the area that we're going to show you, which Mr. Suggett is going to tell us a little bit about. Hello Mr. Suggett. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. How are you creeping up on me? What are the chances on that? What are the chance, <laughs> yes, and we've got a camera and everything. <laughs> yeah. So yes, the Board Explorer uh, group are going to walk uh, on this walk fairly soon. We've got lovely Julia and lovely Amanda and little Joe with us, but where are we going? It's a walk around uh, Ditchling Country Park, I guess is the best way to describe it. So Ditchling in East Sussex, just um, not too far from the Jack and Jill windmills? Not far from Jack and Jill windmills, not far from Burgess Hill. Um, and on the Ditchling yeah. Common is where we're starting. So we've got yeah. this wonderful car park, which we think there are plenty of spaces for. Most important. Most important, so people can park. And how long is the walk? It's a three mile walk. So we, if we weren't filming or stopping and chatting, it'd probably take an hour. Yeah. With everything else, it'd probably take a bit longer, probably three hours, I suppose. Yeah, we're trying not <laughs> to do that because we, we all want to have something to eat at the end of it. So uh, join us on the walk. We'll try and explain any bits and bobs, but we think the terrain is fairly easy going. But the purpose of this also is for us to give it a recce to see if it's, if it's suitable. Yeah. So should we get going? Let's do it. Let's do it after you, sir. All right, thank you. You're going the wrong way. You've gone too far. So here is an overview of the countryside that we shall be walking through, should you come along on our walk. It's a mixture of woodland and farmland. So we're following, this is not one that you've dreamt up, is it? No, 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 it's a walk that I found in the area to suit our needs for the uh, Board Explorer walk. So most of it I know is just the beginning bit that's a bit complicated. So we could get a bit lost? We could. Let's Excellent. hope so. Let's Be hope fun. so. <laughs> well, let's hope we don't get lost. Ditchling Common is quite big, but it's, it's not huge. Have we come a cropper already, Richard? Of course we have. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say we're lost, it's just trying to follow these instructions, but I think if we carry on down here, it should bring us out to where we need to be. We don't want to lose anyone on the walk, do we? Well, we lost someone the last one, didn't we? That's true. They're still walking it. They're still walking it, yeah. yeah we'll not... find them in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. When we send out the search parties. That's it. <laughs> oh, Joe's insisting we move on. Let's do it. Here's a distinctive tree. Makes a great landmark. But can Mr. Suggett actually find the route that we're supposed to take? There are a lot of little winding paths. So one of the things about um, taking instructions off the internet and then reading it, the person who writes these things, they know exactly what they mean when they write them. And of course the terrain, when they write it, may have been slightly different. They may have written it in the summer or the spring and you may be going at a different time. And it seems trying to interpret this walk, which is a great thing to go and do and then first recce a walk before you actually do it, um, can be quite tricky. So Richard's just gone ahead to see if one of the landmarks is um, what was listed. We're losing Joe, but don't worry too much. <laughs> it's not listed. It's no, it is a listed, on, listed the, on there. On the instructions. No path. Oh, there's no path that way. Yeah, but that's right. We we can we can adapt. Okay, we we're, we're going to make up our own route, I think. Isn't it nice to be creative? It isn't always necessary to stick to the printed path, you know. But that's why telling it. So Richard, we've come to a fence, a five bar gate that takes us into um, another part of the common which is all open. Open, yep. Lots of bracken in and there. Lots of bracken. It says there's cattle grazing. I can't see any cattle grazing in there. But I believe that's actually on the return route. Ah, right. So we come back that way. Oh, excellent. Back to this point. So you're a bit clearer where a we are. A bit clearer where we are now. Fantastic. Yeah. Julia Hi. likes the cattle. I hope we do find some cattle. <laughs> well, it sounds like we're going back through that field on the way back. Okay. Yeah. 
Good. Heroically, Richard Suggett led us through the jungle, warding off nasty predators, memorising trees and shrubs en route. And then we came to a gate. So we come to another little stopping point here, Richard. Yes, we found another path through alongside someone's garden, but it is a footpath, so we're okay. Is that where we're going? That's where we're going. Oh, wonderful. Looks fun, doesn't it? Yeah. We did show the image of a, um, a wheelchair at the beginning of that. I don't really advise anybody going on this walk in a wheelchair, um, mainly because it is quite bumpy. Unless, of course, you're used to doing all-terrain sort of stuff. But um, this is a great walk, actually. We've sort of left the common a bit, and now we're, we're going down this beautiful tunnel of greenery, which will look really good. On our right was a large pond with an island and a cut lawn surrounding it. And for no reason at all, it was time for a natural snack beside this splendid oak tree. Julia's found some blackberries. A little snack on route. That one's a tart one. Yours was tart, was it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so there we are, as Richard just said, a little snack for those who didn't pack a lunch. We do advise you to take a little lunch on your way and some water, because if it's on a hot day, of course, you want a little bit of liquid and a little bit of energy. But if you didn't do that, blackberries are the perfect thing. Remember to come in spring when they're not in season. Thank you. Little Joe didn't want to be left out either. I can understand why I skip that to be fair, so I'm going to be a bit On the walk, we shall be circumnavigating around St George's Park Retirement Village and the farm that supports it. And while it is all on public footpaths, a few obstacles meet the pushchair wheeling pedestrians, gates mainly. But after that, it's lovely farmland and open fields. We did chat briefly to the farmer, who was more than welcoming. greeted us with friendly inquisitiveness on the walk. A lovely family of donkeys, or were they just small horses? Little Joe was bowled over by them, although Amanda not so keen to get close up and personal. Go. And then no, no. we saw cows. Got it. <sighs> oh, um, I've seemed to have got stuck in a field um, with a whole load of cows. I think they're cows and not bulls. Julia is photographing the donkeys on the other side of the world and they've got little ones and big ones. And that one's coming over to me. So I'm going to get out of this area. Hello. <clears throat> Luckily, we're not coming back this way, are we, Richard? I don't think so. Thank God for that. There is a, a path that runs right through there. Whew. Survived another day. These are Sussex pedigrees. Rather beautiful and fairly docile cattle, in actual fact. The farmer came over and we had a lovely chat about them. Nice tractor too.
we have encountered a couple of gates which if you've got a buggy or something which is a bit of a pain as you saw we've had to just um, lift it over the top but um, nothing that's been too insurmountable Joe's enjoying the walk very much and uh, I think this is great particularly for kids to get them out into the into the great outdoors there's everything so far that we've spotted on this walk we've got the woodland we've got the common and we've got farmland with even animals so absolutely terrific I don't know exactly how far we've traveled on this because we've been going at a fairly slow rate we've got little Joe uh, we've had to clamber over some of the gates we've speak and spoken speaking even to the farmer we've seen some of the animals en route so it's difficult to gauge exactly but we're pretty much I think now about halfway on our trip round and this is going to be I think a great place for us to have our coffee our biscuits and sandwiches whatever if people come on the Bald Explorer walk and we we're here in Lee of the wonderful retirement village that we can look down on and there's shade as well if it's a very hot day like it is today so so far really good <laughs> We've come out onto the Wivelsfield Road now at a point where these new builds was the original King's, um, the, the King's Head and there's, I've made a video about this, about the peddler who murdered the landlord and I think the um, maid or his wife, I can't remember it now stole his coat and a few other things and made off but he was found and then later hanged and the body brought back and hung in a gibbet he was covered in tar and hung in a gibbet down this road and I'm not sure whether part of our walk will actually take us past the gibbet point um, this area behind me on this bend was the car park but now it's got all these new builds in unfortunately it's a very it's always been a dodgy place and I'm really surprised that anyone would want to build houses on this um, bend but there you go it's a very busy road as you can hear all evidence of the Royal Oak has sadly gone but Richard and I did go and have a quick look at the marker for the gibbet post we found the post which is on the other side of the road this is the where the gallow not the gallows the um, gibbet was hanging and uh, you've just noticed a little plaque on this little post here it says it's been here since the end of the 19th century I'd like to know what I made out that out to last that look good it, yeah that does look like a, a fairly modern sawn bit of wood doesn't it mm. but they reckon that's been there and it's obviously the marker where originally the road was open and people who have seen the body hanging in chains and tarred up to deter people from doing these evil deeds 1734 1734 I'll link to the video that I made of it so you can check out the whole story well the remainder of the walk was on a path parallel to the road and took us back to the car park quite easily enough I hope you've enjoyed our jaunt around Ditchling Common. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you again soon. Bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>